So motion tracking with Blender is a garbage process that makes you film footage, find and track good features, and gives you a 10% chance at an okay camera solve. And if you watch my super long tracking series, those odds are more like 20%, but realistically, if you're not CG matter, you're not going to get great solves at 100% rate. So for those of you who don't want to find and track high quality features, mess around with graphs and bang your head against the wall, there's now a new solution out there that looks like this, this, and this. And these QR code type patterns are called tags, which we print out, put on a flat surface, and use to get really accurate camera solves. With this method, you only need to think about keeping your tag in frame, and both motion blur and camera shake are handled almost perfectly. We can then also remove this tag to get a seamless solve and put most match moving artists out of a job. So as long as you have a camera, a printer, coding glasses for command prompt, and a newest version of Blender, you too can put food on the table in 3, 2, 1. So the basic workflow is going to be printing our tag, filming our footage, feeding it into April Tools to calculate our solve, and using the April Tools add-on to import our solve into Blender. Starting off with the printing, just go to the GitHub repository linked in the description where you'll download the zip file, extract the contents, and open the bin folder so we can view the PDF. And in here we have 587 different tags you can choose from, so you can either choose to print them all out or use a random number generator to make the choice for you. Once you've sent that over to the printer, you can film your tracking footage using the tag, and finally make sure to check the tag side length, which we're going to need in a bit. Now in order for April Tools to read our footage, we need to convert it into an image sequence, so with Blender open, dismantle the default cube, head over to the video editing workspace, and import in your footage, making sure that the view transform set to standard. You can also use the project in and out points to trim your footage, but when everything's set up, go to the output tab, set this to render as an image sequence in some directory, and render out the animation. Again, we want to send the sequence to April Tools, so put on your coding glasses and back in the bin folder, copy the directory address, and with command prompt open, change the directory to that path. We can now call the executable, and since we don't know our footage focal length and sensor width, we'll add in the path to our image sequence, which again we can just copy over and have April Tools estimate our focal length in pixels. What we're basically doing here is getting some extra information about our camera that will help us get a better solve in the next step. Finally, when that's done processing, call for April Tools and with the same path from before add in the estimated focal length in pixels, and also add the tag width in millimeters which we measured before. This will now calculate for our actual camera solve and output the result as a text file in the same directory as the sequence. To import this data, we'll need the Blender add-on, so with Blender open, tear down the default cube and go to Edit Preferences Add-ons and install the importer from the bin folder. Now when we go to the import options, we can choose April Tools tracking data and import into text file as either moving camera or a moving tag. And this means our solve can be interpreted as the camera moving about the tag, the tag moving about the camera, or as the camera tag duality predicted by Einstein. After importing the data, go to the camera properties and add in our image sequence as the background, which will make everything look out of sync, but to fix this, just shift over the keyframe so everything lines up. And there you go, another refreshing beginner-friendly tutorial to try in the bathroom, I've been CG Matter, you've been you, bye bye